So let's start by remembering what we learned in a previous slide about conditional statements, okay? Um, if I want to do a paragraph proof, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take conditional statements that I know, I'm going to organize them in such a way so that the hypothesis of the first one brings us to the conclusion, excuse me, move out of the way, mister, brings us to the conclusion of the last one. Okay, that's really what a paragraph proof is. It's organizing your thoughts using conditional statements or facts to get to your what you want to prove. Now, actually I'm going to move that over. These are the facts that we've kind of come up with, and these are the ones that in general you're going to be using. Um, these are a bunch of different um, conditional statements that you're going to have to organize in your brain to prove what we need to prove. So I'm going to keep these over here. Actually, I'm going to keep these down here so you can see them. And I'll actually I'll keep this out too, so we kind of have that in mind. What's a, what should be in your paper? Um, you need to have what they want us to do and this picture. Okay. So if you're given a if you're given the diagram shown, so if the diagram shown is your hypothesis, can I prove that the measure of angle N is 81 degrees? So. The first thing I'm going to do is look at what's been given to me. That's my hypothesis. That's my diagram. So my diagram shows kind of two triangles that are kissing here. And they've got these two lines that are parallel. And I know that because of the symbols. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those in here. Now I'm noticing that I have this transversal here. I'm specifically looking at that one because I, I think you and I both know there's another transversal here. but. I'm choosing to look at this transversal compared to these parallel lines. Okay, so the first thing I know is if there are two parallel lines, if there are two parallel lines cut by a transversal, Then, okay, so uh, this is just the typical hypothesis for parallel lines. If two parallel lines are cut by transversal, here's my parallel lines, they're cut by transversal. I, I notice something. I notice that this angle is alternate interior to this angle. And I know that alternate interior angles are congruent, so this must be 37 degrees. So that means then by alternate, notice I'm kind of using an abbreviation here, by alternate interior angles, I know the measure of angle, I'm going to call this angle A. The measure of angle A is 37 degrees. I just made up an angle, I just named it A. You can do that too. Okay. So the first thing I did in my logic is say, if these two lines are parallel, then these two angles must be congruent. The next thing I notice is I see a triangle here. And I know the triangles in, I know the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my work over a little bit. I'm going to do some math here. So I've got 37 and 44. If I add these up, let's see, that's 11, that's 8. And I take 180 and I subtract 81, I should be able to find this angle up here. So let's see, that's that's nine, that's 99 degrees. That means this angle is 99 degrees, and we'll call this angle B. Okay, so now if I see a triangle, if I see a triangle, then the angles are supplementary, uh -oh. I'm just going to write over this then, are supplementary. So, the measure of angle B must equal 
99 degrees. Okay, so let's follow my thoughts here. So I had to, I saw the parallel lines, the alternate interior angles, then I saw that there was a triangle, the angles must add up to 180. I did my math on the side, but I only write my result here. Now I'm on my way to getting to angle N. Now the next thing I notice is that this is a line and angle N and angle B form a linear pair. So if angle N and angle B form a linear pair, then they must be supplementary. Okay, if they're supplementary, that means they add up to 180. So I'm going to do that math over here. So I've got 180. I'm going to take away 99. And I just so happen to know from my math, oh, my math right here, I know that that's going to be 81 degrees. So, so the measure of angle N is 81 degrees. All right, that's my paragraph proof. So what I did is I took what I took my existing knowledge about angles and I organized it in a logical way um, to prove that the measure of angle N is 81. Well, this is a good time to point out that if you and your neighbor both did this proof and you wrote it as a paragraph proof, you would definitely be able, you'd probably both use the kind of similar thinking. But your paragraph proof would look different from your neighbor's. And that's because the words that come to mind are different. So your, your friend might have said, um, add up to 180 instead of writing supplementary. That doesn't mean they're right or they're wrong. It just means that they're saying the same thing using different words. So this is a good time to point out that your paragraph proof should be unique to you because you have unique thoughts and a unique way of talking. So um, even right now, if I gave you this proof, you probably would write it a little bit differently because of the way that um, I think compared to you. The most important thing you need to remember is that it has to have logical flow. So what in the end we're looking for is, do you have this? Are you really um, clearly showing me how A connects to B to C to D? In mine, you can see that, and in yours, you should be able to see that too. All right, you've done really well. We're down to our last proof, so take a deep breath. Here we go. Okay, um, it says if AB is parallel to CD, I'm going to go ahead and mark that, if this line is parallel to this line, and... AD is parallel to BC. AD is parallel to BC. Then prove that the measure of angle D is equal to the measure of angle B. Okay. So I'm going to use this information and see if I can string some conditional statements together, string some of the stuff I know about angles together to get to this conclusion. Okay, the first thing I need to know is what, how, how does my picture talk to my knowledge about angles? The first thing I notice is that I have this parallel line and this parallel line, and I have this transversal. So I'm kind of asking myself, what do I know about angle A? in comparison to angle D. What kind of angles are those? Now if you're having a hard time seeing it, you might want to imagine just a plain old set of parallel lines. What do I know about these angles? Okay, what do I know about these angles that are consecutive or on the same side and on the interior? I know that they are supplementary. Okay, so let's start this off. If two lines, and now I'm talking about AB and DC, are parallel. So if two lines, AB and DC, are parallel and cut by a transversal, OK, 
Okay, what's the name of my transversal? My transversal is AD. Then the seam side interior angles are supplementary. Okay. Um, that means the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle D equals 180 degrees. Okay, so that, that, that makes sense. Okay, the next thing I notice is that I've got another pair of parallel lines. I have these parallel lines, the two red parallel lines, cut by this transversal right here. Okay, that's a little, I know, stay with me. Those are these parallel lines cut by that transversal, okay? When I look at that one, I can see that angle A and angle B are also same side interior angles. Let me show you which angles those are. That's this angle and this angle right here. Okay, so now, okay, if two lines, okay, now I'm talking about AD and BC are parallel. Okay, if those two lines are parallel and cut by the transversal, cut by the transversal on um, AB, then those, oh, though, oh, there you go, those same side interior angles, interior angles, are supplementary too. I'm going into my slide here, supplementary too. So, the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B equals 180 degrees also. Okay, so I know these two angles are supplementary and these two angles are supplementary. Now, oh, hold on. If this angle plus this angle equals 180, and this angle plus the same angle also equals 180, do you notice that they share the measure of angle A? So let's say A is, I don't know, 90 degrees. Well, let's not say 90. Let's say 80 degrees. If this is 80 degrees, then angle D must be 100 degrees. Right? They add up to 180. And if this is 80 degrees, and these two are supplementary, then angle B must also be 100 degrees. So that means that D and B are congruent. Oh, that was that's hard to kind of think of, but how, how can I say that in here? So I'm going to try to think about this. Okay, so since angle D and angle B are supplementary with the same angle then they must be congruent. Now it's probably about this time that you're asking yourself do I have to write this much for every proof? The answer is, uh, kinda? I don't know, depends on you. I talk a lot, so my paragraph proofs are lengthy. Um, the more paragraph proofs you do, the cle more clever you're going to be and the faster you will be approving it. But the truth is, a really solid proof, make sure that for any general reason, that any person who looks at your proof is gonna understand it. And sometimes being clear means saying a little bit more. 
So saying more means writing more. So the answer, I guess, is yes, you may have to write a lot. That said, I think you're going to do a great job. Make sure you look back at these two proofs as you do your own two proofs, and I wish you lots of luck.